Hey, I'm Dr. Greg, the grass doctor. Today we're going to talk about overseeding a lawn. If your lawn is a little thin but contains a good amount of desirable grass, it may be a good candidate for overseeding. Overseeding is the practice of slightly thinning the current lawn with a mechanical dethatcher and planting seeds to help improve the lawn. Reasons why you might consider overseeding are to help thicken up your lawn. Besides looking better, research has shown that the best method to control weeds is by having a thick and healthy lawn. To convert from one species to another. For instance, if the majority of my lawn was perennial ryegrass, I may want to start converting it to a species that has better disease tolerance. And finally, to convert from one variety to another. Grass breeders do an excellent job producing new varieties of grass that often have improvements over previous generations such as drought, traffic, and pest tolerance. Overseeding with an up-to-date variety can reduce inputs such as water, fertilizer, and chemicals required to keep the lawn looking nice. Overseeding a lawn is fairly simple, but it will likely require you to make a visit to a rental store for equipment. If you have a serious weed population or any hard to control weeds in the lawn, you may want to get a handle on them before starting as most weeds will come back following overseeding if not dealt with. The first step in overseeding a lawn is to set your mower to its lowest setting and scalping down the existing vegetation. This may result in large amounts of clippings that will need to be raked up and removed before proceeding. Scalping the lawn helps to open up the lawn for seeding to occur and to make it easier to lightly rake the seed into the soil following seeding. The second step is to rent a dethatcher or vertical mower from an equipment rental store Set it so the blades are bringing up a little loose soil and run over the lawn in at least two directions. This process helps to thin out the current stand to reduce competition for the new seedlings and brings loose soil to the surface which is important for the seeding process. This process will also result in large amounts of debris on the surface that will need to be removed before seeding. If renting a dethatcher is not an option, Removing thatch and loosening soil may be done with garden or dethatching rakes and some elbow grease. The next step is to seed. If you are happy with what you currently have on the lawn, try to match the seed to it. If you aren't totally happy with what you have, do some research on better options. Determine how much seed you'll need to cover the area. Oftentimes the bag will indicate how many square feet can be covered with one bag. You can also calculate how much seed you'll need. Applying extra seed wastes your money and doesn't result in a thicker lawn. Use a rotary spreader rather than a drop spreader to get better distribution of seed and be sure to seed in at least two different directions. Once the seed is on the ground, lightly rake it into the loose soil to get good seed to soil contact. This allows the seed to access water and it will be slightly in the soil when it begins to produce a root. You can cover the seed with wheat straw or mulch, but neither is required as long as the seed is kept moist until the seeded area looks like a green fuzz. Once you reach this point, you can begin to reduce the amount of water being applied. Depending on the species planted, you may see germination in as little as a week, but it could also take several weeks. An alternative to using a dethatcher and broadcasting seed is to rent a slit seeder. A slit seeder has vertical mowers that open up the lawn and a seed drill that drops the seed into the slits cut by the vertical mower blades. You'll still need to use this machine in at least two different directions to get a decent amount of seed planted, but it does a nice job as it creates good seed to soil contact in one pass. However, these types of machines will likely cost more to rent. An air fire is another option for thinning out the lawn prior to seeding. If an air fire is used, be sure to run over the lawn multiple times as very little surface disruption occurs from one pass. Break up the cores with a rake or a lawn mower to provide loose soil on the surface. Also, be careful not to plant small seeds like Kentucky bluegrass into deep holes as the small seeds do not have enough stored energy to get shoots to the surface. The better the quality of the varieties that you're planting, the less likely that you'll have to continue overseeding each year. Poor quality varieties or species will often severely thin out during the summertime resulting in the need for more seed each year. With overseeding, you likely won't fix a bad lawn in one year, but you'll be on your way to a healthier and thicker lawn each time you do it. 